He is hoping a lickety split inspector to ensure I haven't tucked the back of my dress into my nicks or anything classy like that. Sharp intake of freshly minted breath. A crisp confirmatory nod bestowed in the direction of my cell phone. My name is... That's all it says on the badge. Precisely that. Dot dot dot. Dash 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 dot dot dot. Strangely having been omitted. No name and no pat drill. At least I have been awarded the Order of the Twin Purplish Hearts that everyone else here seems to sport, where seemingly some thoughtful soul has limbed two interlocking hearts on the cardboard. Pink tinging purple as the hues dissociate along its ply. Just in case one should look down at one's adopted office soiled visitor's pass, I momentarily become fuddled as to where one was. A carbon life form dating society. With the emphasis on form, for we, all of us here tonight, are being recycled. A job lot of pre-laminates, obviously. The badges, I mean. First name terms only, rather than those of divorce settlements. Or no terms at all, as in my case. A dearth of advocacy. For no one at the door had a pen, and my eyeliner pencil was just too chubby to cut the mustard. Folded into this sterilised lucky dip, I've been shorn of my cover. In this unsanctified chapel of love, I've been dechristened. All because it was a bit of a rush. At the last minute, some faint heart ducked out, and I, at the head of the reserve list, was requisitioned, pinned on and hemlined up. Pitter-patter, pitter-patter. Be still, my fluttering heart. Leave that to the eyelashes. Oh well, you know what they say, in for a penny, in for a pound. Never has my stock been so low. Still, it does present something of a problem as to how I tender myself to these fellow travelling love contractors. The natural icebreaker of having my name stamped and barcoded plainly for all to perceive is now in dry dock hock. Champagne aplenty has been flung at this prospective maiden relaunch. Frangible confidence shattered, my bottle has long gone. The strangers in this flow do not pass me like ships in the night. They just proceed to give me, with my nebulous flag of inconvenience, a wide berth. Save for the catch with the bottle thick glasses. He who heaves two at each and every bobbing prow has now sidled into my Chanel wake. Pitching so close into my bosom as to leave a vaporous spume on my nameplate while he tries to focus his magnified sextant. For my part, I'm acquainted with the unmagnificent sex of his balding crown. Unable to pinpoint my heavenly being, he hoists up his specks that they breast his forehead in a myopic attempt to pierce my anonymity. Now even he prepares to cast off, shaking his head foggily which serves only to bring his glasses scything down onto the bridge of his nose. My escort scuttle before I even get out of port. Scanning the room, I see hands wrapped around tumblers of cheap, warm bubbly. Index fingers freed up so as to point to the swirls and loops on each other's badges. I can mark them trying out the sound of one another's handles, sipping at them with their lips, ingesting the consonants and swilling the vowels around inside their cheeks showering the palette with the blend of uniting the name with that of their own, contemplating whether to imbibe or inspectorate that particular vintage before them. You begin to see my problem, my unwritten invisibility. It seems I am to be the undesignated driver for tonight, as they all give rip into their avid ferment, and I am just reduced to smoothing of crinkle in my frock, where the badge of safety pin has rucked up the chiffon beneath. OK now, here goes nothing. I know these badges... This bubbly in hand is the only indication that we couldn't be at an AA meeting. No, not the breakdown service. OK. That went well, I thought. An icebreaker like the one applied to loosen up Leon Trotsky. This perishing no-name badge would be the death of me. I fluffed my line, for how could these not be recovering alcoholics, since they are at least possessed of some spirit? But this slot's more akin to a convention of call slot centre operators. Hello, Archie speaking. May I ask, what is the nature of your inquiry? Maybe I just imagined I heard that for a chat-up line. Or perhaps they could pass to a group of personnel officers on a motivational course. Well, downsizing one's ambitions is an occupational hazard at this stage in life. If only the stakes weren't so great. How much more personal could it be than these two interlaced hearts, lovingly felt tipped by some romantically deluded secretary from Cupidity Corporation? Thinking about it. As I was so late in insertion, had my badge been properly attended to, it would only have been after the secretary had knocked off for home, in readiness for an evening of pre-packaged ready meal, Mills and Boone pre-cooked intimacy, and a re-caught bottle of blue nun. 
with an imitation carnation in her table vase. No, my heart's design would indubitably have been coined by the hostess Pandora herself. That's why it more resembles that of a walnut. She's a busy, busy lady, after all, to judge by watching her crossing the room, as she trifles with the most dirigible men here, but she fails to strike me much of a miracle worker. Even my posies wilted now. It's not fair. While well, they've all moved on to the getting to know you stage, the apparel below, beyond the name, the flesh beneath the clothes, sizing up the jeans, imagining the look of mutually engendered babies, they've stopped nodding, fascinated assent to their partner's self-justifications. It's too distorting of glances slyly thrown towards the calculus of curvature and honedness. My prospects here have been completely stunted by this one scandalous circumstance. Perhaps I should demand a refund. No, more than like they'll just stake me another bulk permutation date instead. And even appropriately sanctioned with the proper badge, I think I'd rather share an evening round the dinner table of their secretary, swapping overblown notions about love. I'd bring the wine, though. The only sparks I'm generating are those of static electricity, as my dress buffs up against the wall. My mother always told me not to slouch. The agency never should have vouched appellation for announcing ourselves. Just let us fashion our own. Keep with the heart motif, only not so presumptuous and successful pairing. Dispense with the eight-page questionnaire, rather than join each of us to encapsulate ourselves through the depiction of our own tickers. Those hale and hearty. Those achy-breaky. Those pierced through with an arrow. Those by a crossbow bolt. And those wholly riddled. Or those excised all of a piece, bloody and raw, with the brutal finesse of an Aztec sky pilot. Those liberal and those sclerotic. Those bypassed and those entangled, be it once, twice or thrice twist, twisted. Those nicotine tarred and those feathered, those stout, those oaked and those soaked and those pickled. Those put upon and those set upon, those lost and those merely taken, those strung, those stricken and... No, I'm out of country in Western songs. But with identities writ so large, we assuredly would have no need of denomination. And what arresting cardiac image might I plump for to sum myself up? Oh, hold on a moment. Not exactly one what one might deem as breezing over in this tightly controlled, air-conditioned atmosphere. But does my champagne moistened finger in the air not discern the zephyr inching inclination towards me of a fellow wallflower of the opposite sex? More wisp than willow. Never mind. Who am I to cavil? No one signed my petition all evening. Steady as she goes. Now... Just stray two to yourself. Of course, I'm not really a lonely heart. Not in the classic sense, if there is such a thing, of course. Um, I have two gorgeous children who just fill my life. Uh, just not my adult long... Ging. Of course. Did someone open a window? Don't bring up the kids, then. Just stay true to myself. Just stay true.